Morning, or evening, guys, brethren, and sisters. Good to have all of you along with us here with our Temperance Awakening, and look forward to doing our second uh, uh, alcohol lecture uh, here uh, today. And as we said in our first lecture, uh, we will be uh, just uh, kind of giving a general overview of uh, of, of alcohol and uh, the things that we'll mention today. You know, as will kind of be topics that uh, we will talk more in depth about in our later lectures. And so, um, just uh, getting us started here by way of introduction, we'll read a couple of verses here out of the Bible. We're going to be using a lot of Bible verses. Of course, we are faith-based. And the first one that we're going to look at is um, the scripture where we get our name from, Temperance Awakening, from the book of Galatians, chapter number 5, and verses 22 and 23. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. <clears throat> and so we're going to be looking at that uh, last element that is mentioned there, that element of the fruit, which of course is temperance. <clears throat> and a good definition of temperance would be self-control, self-restraint. A person with temperance controls their self from things that will harm their body, soul, or spirit, and or will harm others. And uh, they will not get addicted to a harmful substance. Of course, temperance particularly is uh, very closely associated, uh, you know, like with the abstinence of alcohol. You know, so like, uh, like the temperance movement, you know, would still exist, you know, takes that usually in reference to, uh, to alcohol as well as other things like tobacco, pornography, drugs, etc. But particularly, though, alcohol. <clears throat> now we'll go over to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. And verse number, uh, verse number 12, the Bible it says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And so the Apostle Paul says, We are not to be under the influential power of anything in this world. You know, like brought, <clears throat> brought under the power of any. A man is not to be brought under the power of anything that he cannot give up. I.e. an addiction like the theologian Adam Clark uh, wrote in his commentary on this text, says, He is the slave of that thing, and then to him it is sin. Like the word addiction was not initially a negative word uh, used in the English language. Around 1450, addiction uh, come into the English language as a legal term. It was in reference to a person who had addicted themselves when they gave themselves over to a master uh, to learn a trade as an apprentice. Uh, just like in this King James Bible here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 16 and a verse number 15, like we have that word addiction. It says, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. And so like the house of Stephanus addicted themselves to the work of the ministry, which is certainly one of the few healthy addictions that a person can have. And in the 1800s, though, addicted began to refer more so to harmful behaviors than positive ones. Then in the very early 1900s, addicted, uh, the word addict was being commonly used to refer to a person being mastered uh, by tobacco, alcohol, drugs, or like other harmful substances. Like the 1960s Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary defined addict as one who was addicted to a habit, especially to the taking of some drug. Now we'll look at our 1 Corinthians chapter number, uh, chapter number 9 and verse number 25. It says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. <clears throat> And so the believer who gets the incorruptible crown is temperate in all things. See, they have the victory over the world in the flesh. You know, like a person who drinks alcohol or uses tobacco, looks at pornography, uses drugs. You know, they're a person that is going to fall short of that incorruptible crown. Now we go down to verse number 27 of 1 Corinthians 9. It says, But I keep under my body and bring it under subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway. The Apostle Paul kept his flesh under control so that he wouldn't get out of the will of God and be disqualified for the ministry. Now we'll go over to Titus chapter number 2 and look at verses 11 to 13. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. 
teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Like the grace of God teaches us to deny worldly lust for things such as nicotine, alcohol, and pornography. Instead, we are to live sober and righteous, looking for the glory of God. Now we'll go over to 2 Peter chapter number 1. And verses 3 and 4. It says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Like we are to partake of the Lord's divine nature, that is godliness and the knowledge of God. This helps us escape worldly lust. And now 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. That said, aside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. See, we are to be diligent and add to our faith. When we obtain godly knowledge, that leads us to living a life of temperance, and temperance leads to patience and godliness. And these are traits that a disciplined person has. <laughs> Now we'll go over to Romans chapter number 12. And look at verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves, that you present your bodies, that is, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, we are to be diligent and add to our faith when we attain godly knowledge that leads us to living a life of temperance. Temperance leads to... I'm sorry, I'm reading why not the notes on First Peter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Sorry. Our bodies are not to take harmful substances or, or view wicked things. Our bodies are to be a living sacrifice for the Lord, holy and acceptable to God. This is only our reasonable service as Christians. It says reasonable service there. See, much of the world accepts tobacco, alcohol, and pornography, but we are not to be conformed to this world. By prayer and studying the Word of God, we transform our minds. A person who is an addict cannot find the perfect will of God. And we go to Romans chapter 13 and look at verses 13 and 14. It says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in riding and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. See, we're not to be a drunk with alcohol. We are not to be an uncleanness, as in wantonness. As it says, so that's what that term wantonness means, uncleanness. We're to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and not give in to the desires of the flesh. And we'll go back over to the book of Titus, in chapter number 1. And look at verse number 8. But a lover of hospitality, this here is talking about the qualifications for a minister. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. See, the Lord thinks so highly of temperance. He made it a qualification for a pastor. Like in a Titus chapter 2 and verse number 2. says that the aged men be sober, grace, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The Lord also commends elderly men in the church for being a good Christian example by having temperance. We'll look at one more uh, verse of scripture here, then we'll get into some particulars about alcohol. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verses 16 and 17. And the Bible says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. See, a believer's body is the temple of God. Tobacco, alcohol, and even pornography harm a person's body physically, and of course also spiritually. Of course, it's fairly common knowledge that, you know, alcohol and tobacco put people in, a, uh, put people in an early grave, and they also do a host of other things, which we're actually going to look at now, particularly, of course, with alcohol with today. And the things that I'm going over, I didn't mention this when we started, but um, but um, what I'm, the notes that I have here is actually from a book that I wrote 
kind of an introductory book about the ministry, about alcohol, tobacco, and pornography. And I'll put a link below if you want to get that book. It is very inexpensive. It's not very, very long. And it is very inexpensive. I'll put a link to that down there if anybody would like to get a copy of it. And also my email address, actually, I can send that to you as a free ebook. I forgot to mention that. I can actually also send that to you in a free ebook if you just want to give us an email and we'll like, get it over to you. And so I'm going to now go over to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, and verse number 18. It's looking at a pretty familiar verse here about alcohol. It says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. Alcohol can cause many health problems. Alcohol interferes with the brain's communication pathways. These disruptions can change mood and behavior. Alcohol usually makes it difficult to think clearly and move with good coordination. You know, like I.e., why you know, drinking under the influence of alcohol is a crime in uh, you know most countries of the world. And a drinking can also be bad for the heart. Problems can include cardiomyopathy, which is the stretching and deepening of heart muscles, arrhythmias, which is a regular. Uh, which is an irregular heartbeat, and of course also stroke and high blood pressure, which uh, most people are pretty familiar with. And uh, drinking is very hazardous also to the liver. It can lead to a number of problems and liver inflammation, like including uh, stetosis, which is flatty liver, alcohol hepatitis, fibrosis, and cirrhosis as well. And alcohol consumption causes the pancreas to produce toxic substances that can eventually lead to pancreatitis, a dangerous inflammation, and swelling of the blood vessels in the pancreas that prevents proper digestion. And recent extensive research has also shown an association between alcohol and cancer, several types of that actually. In its uh, report on carcinogens, the National Toxicology Program of the United States Department of Health and Human Services List consumption of alcoholic beverages as a known human carcinogen. And the more alcohol a person drinks, the higher their chance is of getting this cancer. Alcohol is also a major risk factor for certain head and neck cancers, particularly cancers of the oral cavity, throat, and voice box. And uh, esoph esophageal, let's see, I'm sorry, esophageal cancer is also a major risk for alcohol drinkers, especially an esoph esophageal cancer called esophageal squamos. Uh, cell carcinoma. <coughs> Excuse me there. Alcohol is the primary cause of liver cancer. Recent studies have also discovered that women who drink have an increased chance of getting breast cancer. Drinking alcohol is associated with a modestly increased risk of cancers in the colon and rectum. Alcohol consumption also weakens a person's immune system over time, weakening the body's defense system against against diseases. People who drink regularly are more prone to get diseases like pneumonia and tuberculosis. Then, of course, along with all the health problems associated with alcohol, there are also a lot of social problems. There's a clear connection between alcohol and violent behavior. Half of all domestic abuse in the United States involves alcoholic beverages. Alcohol is a leading contributor to child abuse and child neglect. Children who grow up with an alcoholic in their family are four times more likely to abuse alcohol as adults. And almost half of all the divorces in the USA, one of the parties was a heavy drinker with their alcoholism playing a major role in the divorce. The addiction to alcohol affected the party's lack of commitment, caused infidelity, arguing, financial problems, and spousal abuse. And uh, generally speaking, alcohol addiction causes many major problems for the addict. There's financial problems, a lack of family life, lost friendships, poor work performance or not working at all, depression and mental instability. Not to mention the problem with drunk driving. Every day 30 people die because of alcohol impaired driving in the United States alone. So that's just in the United States, not even other countries. That is one death every 50 minutes in the United States because of drunk driving. And about 290,000 other people are injured in uh, drunk driving crashes every year. Then to add to this, a little more than one half of all violent crimes in the United States involved alcohol consumption. And further, alcohol is a contributing factor in approximately half of all the sexual assault cases in the United States. And so certainly there, a lot of, uh, a lot of issues... So a lot of issues there with alcohol, uh, both uh, socially and physically. 
And that'll end our lecture today. And so thank you for being with us as we said this year. A general overview and uh, things that we're going to look at in a lot more detail in our following lectures. And uh, we mentioned the book that we have here called Temperance Awakening, uh, which is a look at alcohol, tobacco, and pornography. We got the link there if you want to purchase that online in hard copy. Or if you want a free ebook, our email address is there. Uh, simply email us. And we'll see you next time for our third lecture. And until then, until the direction of the shadows flee away, I am Dr. Cooper and I love you and I appreciate you.